city of 11 million, but it doesn't look like it. Closed off from the outside world, Wuhan is in lockdown. That's no trains in or out. Passengers are being kept away. The whole public transport network is shut and SWAT teams patrol the streets. But it's not just Wuhan that's affected. Neighboring cities are also going into lockdown, including Wangang and Ezu, all in the Hubei province. But outside of China, international concern is growing, with cases now confirmed in Vietnam, Saudi Arabia and Singapore. And it's airports in particular that are on high alert. Millions are getting ready to travel across the country to celebrate Chinese New Year, one of the world's largest annual migrations. But there's anger that the Chinese authorities didn't act quickly enough. I think the epidemic situation is almost out of control, so I'm so scared and I only want to go back home. I know it's dangerous on the trip, but I still want to go home. Personally, I think it's a little bit late. The outbreak has developed to this stage. I think it's a little bit late to lock down the city. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Here in the UK, the health secretary warned we could expect to see cases. The chief medical officer has revised the risk to the UK population from very low to low and has concluded that while there is an increased likelihood that cases may arise in this country, we are well prepared and well equipped to deal with them. In Scotland, there are now five suspected cases and a patient in Belfast is also undergoing precautionary tests. But medical experts say it's likely to take several days until the virus is confirmed. Tonight, the World Health Organization said it was not yet a public health emergency of international concern, but they're still monitoring the situation closely. The fact that I'm not declaring fake today should not be taken as a sign that WHO does not think the situation is serious or that we are not taking it seriously. Nothing could be further from the truth. WHO is following this outbreak every minute of every day. The WHO say nearly 600 people have now been infected. And back in the city where it's thought to have started, people are preparing for a Chinese New Year like no other, with no word on when the lockdown will be lifted. I should tell reporting. Well, we're joined now by Professor Sean Griffiths, Emeritus Professor at the Chinese University of Hong Kong and the co-chair of the SARS inquiry for the Hong Kong government back in 2003. And that is incredibly useful because presumably this is where the, the World Health Organization and others are looking to determine what we should do. I think so. Uh, when SARS came in, into being, we didn't know what it was. It took a long time to find it was a coronavirus and then to find out how to, the, about the genetic sequencing and how it was spreading. So you can rapidly learn. But most importantly, uh, the response by China this time is very different. There's openness, there's information flows really quickly. The public are told, other countries are told. And by sharing information, we have a better hope of getting on top of the epidemic. Do we know enough about the coronavirus that's, you know, moving at the moment to know how related it might be to SARS? Uh, we know it's a coronavirus. And, and what and does I that sort of mean? But basically, that's a virus that has a sort of ring around it. That's why it's called a coronavirus. It's the mm -hmm. way that it looks. So it has some genetic similarities, but it's not the same. And so the question really is, um, what does this virus look like? under the electron microscope, How, what's the genetic sequencing, what's the genetic sequencing over time? Because with SARS, what we found was that the height of the infectivity, there was one configuration, and it gradually attenuated, and the, and the virus basically became uninfective, didn't affect humans anymore. So we haven't seen SARS since that epidemic in 2003. And in effect, at the end of your inquiry, did you draw up a game plan for how you would deal with what happened well, or what's happening now? We certainly did. We had different levels of activity. We had the global 
activity. And you've just heard the report from the WHO where people are sharing the decision making. It's open and transparent. Uh, we, we recommended better information systems um, so that case notification was alerted. So, for example, we all know that during today, four cases, of, uh, four suspected cases in Scotland. Uh, during SARS initially, there was a lot of silence in China, um, even in Hong Kong, we didn't know. Uh, where, whether there were cases that we first found out about this atypical pneumonia when cases came across from Shenzhen, which is on the border, uh, to Hong Kong and the you know, questions were raised. But it took a long time for confirmation. So really sharing of information, preparation in the hospitals, alerting general practitioners to um, pick up the cases, but most importantly, telling the public. Now, you had one um, big thing, and that is telling people to be hygienic with them. I think with any virus, you need to tell people that they, you have a role to play, hand hygiene. So if you've got a cold, cover your mouth when you cough, wash your hands often, uh, make sure you have environmental hygiene uh, around you as well. So hygiene, hand washing, very important.